Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, we're going to take a look at setting up uh, additional Google fonts inside of ClickFunnels because uh, straight out of the box, ClickFunnels has a lot of the Google fonts. Does it have them all? I doubt it. I don't know when was the last time they updated the list. But as you saw, I came into the element here. We'll just click on this again. We'll open the gear. We'll come in here. We'll click on where it says font family right here. And so you got a bunch of pre-picked ones here on the front page. Or you come up here and you can scroll through and you can find more and more and more of them. Now, the thing I'll tell you is if you're looking to just italicize something, uh, you don't need to upload a new font for that. You can, of course, just come in over here and you can say, let's make this italicized and you can do it there. So when you are uploading fonts, you just need the base font. You never need the italic font because you can already do that right here inside of ClickFunnels. But where the problem comes in sometimes is people want a larger font weight or a smaller font weight, something like that. And so let's take a look at this element itself. I made this last part here uh, bold and I also made it red. And we can come down here and we can see that the font weight on that is 700. And we're going to say, okay, we don't want 700, we want 900 as our font on this. So how can we get this? We want 900 as our font weight. So how can we get that? Well, we can go into Google. And right now I have this one set to Roboto. So we're going to use the Roboto font inside of Google fonts. So you go fonts.google.com and Roboto is right here. And so you can search in different ways. You got different categories. You got different languages. You got all kinds of stuff in here you can search on. Font properties, even thickness, all these things. So find the font you want and then we can come in here and we can we can open it up. Now, I was talking about the existing fonts inside of ClickFunnels. Well, if there's a Google font that isn't existing, you use exactly the same thing I'm going to show you here in order to load up that font. So let's come in. And we got our Roboto, so we'll click on that. Opens up the Roboto page. And we're going to come down here and say we want black 900. So we want a really big font, and we're also going to load in a really small font. And like I said, you don't need the italics because that can be done automatically inside of ClickFunnels. Unless, and you may want to test this, you may want to try the italics and then try uploading the italics font and see if they look different. Because there is a possibility that may be, especially with other types of fonts other than Google fonts. So again, it's one of those things you want to test because I just don't have time to test everything. So here we go. We're going to go to Black 900 and it added it. So we got to come up here and we got to click here to view selected families and it opens up this sidebar. And now it says up here, okay, I had one open already. Let's take this out. We'll get rid of that. So now we have just our Roboto up here, which is what we want. Because you probably don't want to be uploading two different families at the same time just to keep things straight. So we just have Roboto right now. But let's say I also want to put in a really tiny font. And let's add our 100 font weight here as well. So now we have our 100 and our 900. And we come down to the bottom. And that is reflected down here. It says Roboto weight at 900 semi, I mean 100 semicolon 900. So this here is important information. These are the links we will use if we want to put this into the head section of our page. If we want to put it into the custom CSS, we would use this at import tag. So let's just do the link part first. So we would just grab this whole thing and we will copy this. We'll come back into click funnels and we'll come up to the top and we're going to go to our tracking code. We're going to go to our header tracking code. And I don't know why I have, Oh, I, I had that for a different example. So all we're going to do is we're going to take that out of there and then we're going to what I just do here. Let's just replace this whole thing. There we go. And we should have the whole thing now. So we got our link rel equals, et cetera, et cetera. You got three different links in here with um, with hrefs with hyperlinks to other files which are then pulling in all the google information that we need now we can do it here if we want to do it just on this singular page 
Or what we can do is we can go out of here and we're just going to say leave. And if we want it on the entirety of the funnel, we'll come back to this page here. We go to our settings and we can come down here to our head tracking code and we can put it into our head tracking code right in here as well. Let me open that up. So now you can see it here. So now it's in our head tracking code and it's there. And again, that will then be available to every single funnel step, not just the individual one we are on. So that's two ways you can put it in. And now the third way is we'll go back into the funnel itself and we're going to come back over to our fonts here. And now let's say this way we want to do it into the CSS only, not into the head tracking code. And some people will say, especially real top end programmers and stuff will say, never use this method here. Always use the link method in the headers. Do whatever you want. If you're uploading one tiny, measly little font, it's not going to really affect the load speed on your page. If you're uploading a whole bunch of them, then I would definitely use the other method. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to copy out the part where it starts here at, at import. We don't need the style tags because we're already putting it inside of the custom CSS. So it's inside of existing style tags. So we're going to copy that. We're going to come back here. We're going to go into our CSS. And we're going to come up to the top and we are just going to, um, let's just put on the very first line. We will just paste that in. Let's broaden this out a little bit so we can see the entirety of it. So here is now our font definition in here in the CSS. Let's move this down a little bit. Now what we have to do is we have to identify where we want to use this font family. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this down a little bit. And oh, so I guess what I did when I did not save that page, let's see here, we're going to add a section back in at the top. And let's give that section some room to breathe. And then we're going to put our headline back in. And so in this case here, we want to turn off the bold on most of it. And then this part here, we want that bold and we want the color on that bold to be our red color right there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we have to say, okay, how do we call this font family? So that is right here. Google gives it right to you. So just come over here and we will copy this come back into our CSS and I'm just going to paste it right here for now because we have to say now, where do we want to apply this font family? So we need a selector to say, where's this font family going to be applied? Well, we know it's going to be applied onto this lesson right here. So let us grab a hold of the lesson and I'm sorry, grab a hold of the, the headline. And what we're going to do in this case here, we are just going to do it to the uh, CSS ID selector. I'm not going to put in a data title or anything like that. So we're going to come here. We're going to paste this in. We're going to put in our left curly bracket, and then we're going to put in our right curly bracket, and we're going to put in two spaces. And now let's take a look at it and nothing has changed. And it's because we have not put in a font weight yet. So now let's put in our font weight of 900 and it should give us what we want. And the reason it didn't is because this CSS ID selector right here is only for the L headline wrapper and it did not flow down to the elements inside of it, the child elements inside of it. So what we have to do, if we want to apply this to the entirety of that line, we then can put in something here like the L headline after it, or the H1 is even better. So we'll say we're going to put our H1 tag in here after this, and then it applies it to the entirety of the line. And you see down here in the bottom now we should have um, let me see, let's click on the right one here. Down here we have a font weight nine of 900. And if we take out that H1, we then have a font weight of 500. So we can put the H1 back in. But the problem is we don't want the entire line to be that big. We only want the bold. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap out that H1 for a B. 
And now just the bold part there, let's uh, click back onto this element, just the bold part here is 900, whereas the H1 part is 500. Okay, so we have that. Now, how can we affect the rest of this? Well, let's just play around with this a little bit. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it above it. I'm going to put in H1 and then I'm going to put in 100 and see what we get. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. So what we're saying here is for our H1 element, which would be both the bold part and the not bold part, we want it to be 100. But then because we declared the bold part after the H1 part, this will become 900. So let's see what happens when we flip-flop these two here. Let me X that out of there and put it up here. And well, okay, it did still work right. It uh, technically sort of, it probably shouldn't be working right. So what I would do is I would always try to put it in the proper order like this. And actually what I'm seeing here, okay, so it is maintaining the bold here. All right, let's inspect this here because it may or may not be working right. So now it's sitting at a font weight of 700. Let me paste this back in. And so it did go to a font weight of 900. So what I started to say is I would normally make sure I did have them in this order because depending on different browsers or whatever, I'm on Chrome, on a Mac on here. So different machines, different browsers, they may do it differently. But now we have a set the way we want is that this part, the first part here is a font weight of 100. The second part, the bold part is a font weight of 900. And so whether you use the at import here in the CSS or you use the links in the head tracking code of either the page or the funnel itself, it will work exactly the same. Just make sure you have one in. And then always remember, you have to come in here and you have to tell it very specifically what element and even what part of the element you want that font applied to. So if you have any questions, just let me know.